cute and we keep it fun. Um, if you're here tonight, I appreciate you being here, taking the time, the moment to stop in. Please make sure you favorite the gifters. And we have two special guests, as you saw tonight. Now, both of our special guests have, have pets. And we are excited to get in, into asking them about their pet journeys. But before we get started with our pet journeys, we like to talk and do something called animal trivia. And animal trivia is a good way we get started to seeing what you know about the pets. We're going to start with something easy, though. We're going to do cats today because our first special guest today, Queen Nikki, has a cat. So we're going to start with cat trivia tonight to see what you know about your meow. Hi, Harlem Kitty. Hello, everybody. Welcome in. It's so good to see you. And thank you for choosing to come here tonight. Um, now, Kitty, you say, what is a proper term for a group of kittens? Oh, I see featured show host Quinn and JT. Top Batch Quinn and JT do have a featured show as well, as well on Sundays at 9 p.m. And please make sure anybody who comes in, good listener as well, she has a featured show too. Make sure you guys favorite the content creators on the app here. If you have a featured show, please feel free to plug your dates and times of your show in the comments all throughout the show as long as you're here, okay? So, also, <clears throat> we're getting started tonight. What is a proper term for a group of kittens? Is it a kindle? Is it a kind? Is it a kettle or is it a caboodle? Is it a Kindle? A, oh, Lady Bot. Lady Bot is coming out strong. She says, it is a Kindle. You are correct. The proper term for a group of kittens is a Kindle. Litter or intrigue. You've got it. Let's go. Ooh. All right. What do you know about this, though? What? All cats are born with what color eyes? All cats are born with what color eyes? Emoji J says blue, 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 blue. You guys are so good. Yes, it is blue. You are correct. All cats are born with blue eyes. Their adult eye color will begin to appear in three to 12 weeks. As a result, eye color is not recorded on a CFA registration records except in the case of white cats. White cats whose eyes remain blue have a high chance of de deafness. So those with only one blue eye will likely be deaf only in the ear closest in their blue eye. Yes, that's right. Thank you for all the gifts, you guys. Hello, Cheech. Hello, Fred. Hello. All right. What percentage of a cat's bones are in its tail? What percentage of a cat's bones are in its tail? Is it 20%? Is it 2%? Is it 10%? Or kitty, there are no bones in a cat's tail. What do you think? I see some 20. All right. Not 20. I see zero. Nope, that's not right either. It's got to be 2 or 10%. We got a 50-50 split. I see somebody going for it. 10, it is, and it is 10. Yes, about 10% of a cat's bones are in its tail. These bones are called caudal vertebrae. A cat's tail made up of these vertebrae, ligaments, tendon, and voluntary muscle is used primarily to communicate and to maintain balance. Ooh, yeah, that's okay, Rave Nor. We see you, we're, sad. we're happy you're here. Um, what is it called when a cat needs the ground? What is it called when a cat needs the ground? Is it called snurgling? Do you want a snurgling? Is it called sneagling? Is it a sneagling for you? Is it the rubbing or is it called kneading? Is it kneading, rubbing, sneagling, or snorkeling? There's a lot of sneagle, snuggle, snorkel. Okay, I see somebody, I see number four, kneading, not kneading. I see snorkeling. It is called snorkeling. Good job, Ladybot. When a cat needs on the ground, it's called snorkeling. 
they develop this habit as kittens because it helps their mother produce milk. Yes, a little snargle here, a little snargle there makes the little baby kitten big. Ooh, ooh. Okay, <laughs> how many, <laughs> meow, that's right. How many different cat sounds, or how many different sounds can a cat make? Is it 150? Is it 100? Is it 10? Or is it 27? I see, B says 150, kitty. It's not 150. I see 10. No, it's not 10. I see 27. It's not 27. And Fred coming in last with 100. But that is the correct answer. Cats can make about 100 different sounds. A dog can make about 10 different sounds. Thank you, MG. So they, you guys, cats can make a hundred different sounds and the dog can make about 10 different sounds. All right, now we're moving on. We're getting into the real, real, real nitty gritty questions. We want to know what you know about cats. If you're coming into Meow and Me, welcome into Meow and Me right now. We're doing our first thing called Animal Trivia. And tonight we are doing cats because our first special guest, Queen Nikki, has a cat tonight. Okay? And so we are learning what you know about the kitty Meow. Meow. Okay. What year was the first major cat show held in the United States? Thank you, Fred. Was it 1921? Was it 1895? Was it 1952? Or was it 1842? 1921, 1895, 1952, or 1842? I see 1895. Is this the answer? Yes, it is. 1895. Ooh, you got it. The first major cat show in the United States was held Ninja, that, yeah, there you go, Ninja, was held in the May of 1895 at Madison Square Garden in New York City. It featured really 176 cats, including two ocelots, two wild cats, and three civets. A brown tabby female Maine, Maine Coon cat named Cozy, owned by Mrs. Fred Brown, was named best in show. Yes, that is correct. Now let's see what you know about how hot your cat runs. What is the normal body temperature of a cat? What is the normal body temperature of a cat? Is it 102 degrees Fahrenheit? Is it 94 degrees Fahrenheit? Is it 106 degrees Fahrenheit or 98 degrees Fahrenheit? We have 102, 94, 106, and 98. A uh, Kawaii's coming in hot. She says, Kitty, it's 106. No, it's not. Let's see who else has an answer. She's 298. We don't have that as an option, Mo. 102, let's go, let's go. 102 is the answer. The normal body temperature of a cat is approximately 102 degrees Fahrenheit. If your cat has a body temperature over 104 degrees Fahrenheit or below 99 degrees Fahrenheit, you should contact your vet. It means your cat is seriously ill, okay? Now, let's see what you know about these things about your cats. What breed of cat has no tail. What breed of cat has no tail? Is it a snowshoe? It is a La Perm. Is it a Singapura? Or is it a Manx? What do you think? What breed of cat has no tail? Thank you, Ninja Dolls. I see a lot of Minx. And you are right. It is the Minx. The Minx is a breed of cat with a genetic mutation of the spine. Although cats of this breed are sometimes born with a normal tail, they are most often born with either a little tiny stub or no tail at all. This spinal defect also produces a noticeable arch from the shoulders to the rump of the cat, causing the manx to hop somewhat when running. 
like they kind of hop a little bit giving it almost a rabbit like stride so if you want a kitty with no tail that hops a little bit like a bunny then you could get a minx okay all right now if you're just coming in welcome in pretty soon we're gonna have my first special guest queen nikki and she's gonna tell us all about her meow Brr. okay what u.s city had a cat for a mayor for almost 20 years what u.s city had a cat for a mayor for almost two 20 years was it in jack jacksboro texas was it in Talkinta, alaska was it in warm river idaho or was it in gardner kansas thank you bella i see alaska and you are correct it is alaska Stubbs the cat became mayor of Talkeetna, Alaska in July of 1997. <laughs> As of 20, <laughs> Stubbs was the mayor, but his position was honorary since the town is only a historical district. Mayor Stubbs though does have a nice ring to it, I feel like, right? Like the kitty meow, Mayor Kitty Meow Stubbs, let's go. Okay. Which country has more cats per person than any other country in the world? Which country has more cats per person than any other country in the world? Is it Denmark? Is it the United States? Is it Djibouti? Is it New Zealand? Okay, is, is it Denmark, United States? I see. <laughs> It is not Djibouti. Okay, I see New Zealand. It is New Zealand. Okay, according to National Geographic, New Zealand leads the world with an average of 1.8 cats per household. Yes, I said it. <laughs> How many cats did Abraham Lincoln have in the White House? One, four, three, or two. One, four, three, or two. What do you think Abe Lincoln, President Abraham Lincoln had? Do you think it was four? You guys are so good. How did you know that? You guys are like, hey, what are you, U.S. history buffs? You're incredible. You're incredible. Abraham Lincoln did have four cats in the White House. And once, and, and once observed that his cat Dixie was smart, he, he actually said this. He said, Abraham Lincoln said that his cat Dixie was smarter than his whole cabinet. <laughs> now, <laughs> now you can feel comfortable when we ha there's a cat person as a president. Abraham Lincoln was, was one of them. Okay, what skills, okay, what? let's do this. This is gonna be our last animal trivia question of the night. And then we're gonna have my first special guest tonight come into the, come into the box to let's talk about her kitty meow is queen nikki i see her here in the comments when you're ready queen please request the box so i know you're ready and we will get started now in the meantime this is our last animal question of the night you guys this is our last animal question of the night so who will know the answer i don't know what is a group of cats called is it called a cluster a felis a clowder or a chowder? What do you think? Is it a cluster, a felis, a clowder or a chowder? I see chowder. No, I see clowder. Oh, you are right. It's a clowder. A group of cats is called a clowder. C L O W D E R. C L O W D E R. Okay. Felis is the genus. Chowder is a soup and cluster. Well, cluster is just that it's a cluster, it, but, uh, but a group of cats is called a clowder. That's right. Okay. So everybody 
Thank you for coming in. If you're coming in to meow and me right now, we just finished our first segment with Animal Trivia. We are here. We're getting started with our first special guest tonight. Her name is Queen Nikki. I see she's brought some friends with her to cheer her on in the comments. I see some emojis repping out Queen Nikki in the comments, and we are here for that. We are here to see and know all about Queen Nikki's meow. Let's hear it. Let's welcome her in, everybody. Here we go. Hello, Queen. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. I'm so, so glad to have you come on the program tonight. Um, Queen Nikki, like, let's just get started right at the beginning. What, what is your, you have a cat, a dog, a, a, what kind of pet do you have? I have a cat. A cat. Okay. And can we see your kitty? She said hi. Oh, she said meow. Oh, she's pretty. What is her name? Her name is Laura. Laura. How old is she? She is uh, eight months old. She's oh, really she's grumpy right now because she's ready to eat. <laughs> she, she is a lit. She is a young lady. She's a yeah, young. She is. She's grumpy because she want to eat. I don't blame her. I get grumpy when I want to eat as well. I mean, rawr. I kind of grabbed her from her eating. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I mean, and it's okay. You know, we are here. We, sometimes we do watch the kitties eat. Sometimes we watch them eat snacks. It's whatever. Um, however you can herd the kitties. It's like herding squirrels, you know? I know, um, right? And it's okay. So you've had her for eight months. Where did you get her at? Like, what what made you just okay? Her? So, um, for you guys that don't know me, I'm a truck driver. I actually found her. She was stuck in between um, a, a tire that was in a trailer, and um, I kept hearing her meow while I was at work. And I was like, oh my god, like where's she at? And um, and I found her stuck. She was stuck in between. The, uh, she got stuck in between the tires. And I rescued her. I took her home. I washed her up, and um, and she's been with me ever since. <laughs> so, so you literally yeah. saved this cat's life. Um, um, you know, you found her, and she's kind of like by herself, no other cats around, just her. She was actually smaller than that. She was actually a kitten. Um, it looked like she might have got lost from her mother, and I felt so bad, you know, because I was like, she's a kitty. And like she probably was looking for her mom. She probably was crying, looking for her mom. And um, it took her a while to get used to being at home with me. Um, but I kind of kept, kept her isolated because I have three kids a little bit. So I kept her isolated for a second until so she got comfortable. And then now she's like, she's like, I'm going everywhere. I'm, I'm like all over the place. Uh, <laughs> so that's she got comfortable, and I love it. I love it. Cece, thank you. Absolutely. And now you said you named her Laura, like. Yeah, Laura. Now, can I ask you a little bit about that? Like, why did you name your kitty Laura? What is there a special reason? I had a friend that um, I had a friend that was very close to me, and um, she passed away. Um, she from depression. Um, she actually took her life, and that was her name. Her name was Laura. And um, for me, for me, I feel like saving that cat um, showed me that survival is something. You know what I mean? And um, she's a survivor. And even though she's gone, I feel like that was the best way for me to remember her. So her name was Laura. I inc that That's an incredible testament towards friendship and for remembering somebody who is special in your life, Queen Nikki. Absolutely. Um, and I, in the situation, too, like, it is fitting, is a fitting title. I can see now why you would have chosen that name for your pet you know as well um now you said too like she's new she's she's running around she's doing things she's she's probably driving you crazy at times what are some of the things that have been challenges with a new, new like a new baby Thank you. well um when she first got home i'm not gonna lie to you guys it was hard to feed her okay because she was she she i think that she wasn't used to eating actual cat cat food because she was a stray um uh, so it took it took her a minute to actually get used to it 
Um, and then after that, um, the feeding process, getting to know her, you know, bonding with her, understanding what, what food that she actually like and don't like. It's kind of like raising a kid. Um, it's, it's taking time and, and things might not go your way and um, she might not eat the way she wants, you know what I mean? So paying attention to that um, is, is a must. But I, I absolutely love the time because now it's like I can't get rid of her. Now she sleeps with me. <laughs> it's like now she's like at the foot of my bed every night. So like, yeah, I love her. I absolutely love her. She grew on me. And, I, and it's crazy because I actually got the cat for my daughter and she'd been begging me for a cat. And I was like, when I stay, it was just, it just happened at the right moment, saving her. And um, then after that, she just grew on me. So I absolutely love her. I absolutely love her. Wow. So you, she's become your baby. It sounds pretty like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she pretty much became mine. <laughs> she recognizes who pulled her out of a tire. She knows. Yeah. She knows that's what's going on. Um, so she's developed a special bond with you. But that being said, you know, do you have any other pets in the household or is it just her? It's just her. Okay. It's just her. Um, um, I used to have another cat. Um, his name was um, Tigger. Um, he actually ran away about like a month ago. And uh, I still have not found him, and I'm still looking for him. Um, he oh. got out. One of my kids let him out as they were taking out the garbage, and I have not yet to find him. But I, I'm, I'm, please pray for me, you guys. Uh, keep your fingers crossed, because uh, that's my baby. I've been having him. Actually, I took him um, uh, from his mom. Uh, it was a lady that was giving away cats, and she just didn't want him. Her cat, she didn't know her cat was pregnant, and actually had kittens, and she actually took the cat away from their mother before before the time so um that was that was crazy and and i had to nurse him i had to actually take him with me and bottle feed him while i was at work so i, I it was it was a lot <laughs> you know it sounds to me like you have a special soft place in your heart for cats queen nikki is it just for cats or do you have a love for, I, for all uh, animals I, I i was i used to be one i used to want to be a vet since I was a little girl, I love pets. Like my dad used to get on me about sneaking in pets in the house. Uh, anything I can get my hands on, I was just like, "Oh my god, I just need to nurture." I remember I, I actually um, came outside one day and it was like a, a bird that fell out the tree, uh, out his nest, and um, the, it broke his wing. And um, and I tried to feed it, and it was like, "Oh my god, he's gonna die!" I tried to sneak him in the house, and you know the, the birds they was chirping and. And everything so eventually my father found the cat and i i mean the, the the bird and i got in trouble for it for bringing it in the house um but i've always been a nurturing type of person to animals and so my you know i lost my mother last year and um i was i actually cared for her so that's something I, that's just within me always been since i was a kid that isn't that that's that's a rare quality and something to completely just wrap your arms around and just that's that's and just hold on tight it's it's incredible um there's so much that i want to ask you about um now you said she sleeps with you how does she work well does she work well with your daughter or is yes. she only follow you around okay so <laughs> She did this funny thing the other day. I'm not going to lie. It was so funny, right? I was laying in bed with her. And we, I was watching TV and my daughter came in the room and she just jolted it like under the bed. She ain't never do that before, right? Oh, and um, she never like like ran. Like she was laying there just calmly and just took off running. And I was like, what did you do to her? Like, what did you do to her? She don't want to be bothering you. Why, why you? What would you do? And then my son came in the room and was like, she had him by his arms, by her arms. It was holding. I was like, "You don't do that." I talked to her like, "No, no, no, no. You don't do that. You gotta be gentle with the baby and everything like that." So it's it's very hard when you have when you have children that's small and then you have a, a fragile animal. And it's very you have to coach them, and it's so that that is something that I have to do all day. <laughs> yeah, I do no. that all day. <laughs> but yeah. um, they for the most part they get along. Um, once she understood not to hold the cat like that, now it's just like a, like everyday breeze. 
See, and that's, I mean, now she doesn't run away from her. Does um, Laura do anything naughty around the house? Does she eat your shoes? Does she tear up your windowsills? Like, does she have any bad habits? Ooh. Oh, my God, you guys. Laura, Laura, Laura. Okay. She likes to claw my couch, <laughs> the edge of my couch. Oh. She likes to, I seen her run up my courtroom one day. Like, I'm talking about like full claws up my curtain one day. And, 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 and I was like, what are you doing? And she looked at, at me like I was crazy. <laughs> but she liked to do that. She liked to be on my counter. And I keep telling her, no, she can't be on my counter where the food is, you know. Um, and clawing my shoes. Oh, my God. I had a brand new shoe. I never wore it. It was Michael Court uh, boots that I had never wore before, and she clawed the top of them, so I couldn't even wear them. They was like $300. I was so mad. I was so mad. I was like, what are you doing? And I couldn't, I couldn't do nothing to her, but I was just like, oh. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was, that's like the only thing that she did, but it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah, I would have been crying. I would have been like, the Michael Kors shoes. I know. What are you doing? I know. You're I know. Yeah. No, it, I, the most, that, was, that was when she when she first came in the house. Like, yeah. I want to say like that first month of her being in the house, that's when it happened. It was like, it was just like one thing after another. But now since then, she kind of calmed down. She's not like as bad on doing things so i really i really i'm happy that she calmed down <laughs> i can understand that um you know i it's a lot it's a lot when you have your cat and they're eating your shoes at first and you know they're learning how to exist in a new home and a new place and and that's pretty common um to have them come for something whether it's a windowsill or a stand like especially when it's a kitty um you know i mean we're just living in their domain right um right. but what i mean okay you know you said you have this huge love of animals and you've always had a love of animals what has something owning you know it sounds like between your last cat and and laura like you've had to exercise a lot of um skills you know what has what has what has owning a pet what has what has owning a pet taught you like on a personal level what has it taught you about yourself um nursing like caring for people not even just people but caring for something right um that's what it taught me patience um is one of them for one yeah. right and um controlling your anger right controlling because pets don't understand what's going on they just they just doing what they do right they do what they do nat naturally which is clawing things and climbing on things and and nothing right so it, it taught me to kind of have patience towards that you know being able to patiently deal with that and not immediately resort to anger um and that's something that having a having a pet and a child then taught me definitely yeah i I bet the children even more so than the pets, right? Yeah. Yeah. Children, they kind of understand eventually. They kind of understand eventually. And then pets, they don't understand at all. It's like right. they understand enough, like, you know, a little bit. So it's, 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 it's a lot to deal with when you have, you know, kids and then you have a pet and it's a lot to deal with. Yeah, no. I, deal and, with it every day. I love it. And, and I love that. I love that, you know. Um, you know, and I think that you're you're talking about like you know you know your emotions and stuff. You know, do you think your your pets can tell like when you're sad? Do you think your your pets can yeah. zone in on your emotions at all? Like, so do you have any I was, like an example of that all that? Uh, yeah, that I can tell you an example. Right okay, so uh, my my other cat that got away, um, he was so loving. Like I I, I never had no. Pet, like like a cat that was like him um he would sit there and cuddle you and just cuddle with you he would not move but when i lost my mother i felt like he felt my pain because he did not leave my bed like he literally only left my bed and under my like he used to sleep on my side 
And he only left there when I was literally either I was getting up to go to the bathroom or get, going to get something to eat or he was going to eat or and go to the bathroom. He was coming right back. And um, he just looked at me. He just looked like surprised. Like he's normally all over the place, but he was just like laying there. Like he was just like depressed. And, 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 and at that moment, I knew that I feel like pets can understand and feel when you're going through, their owners are going through some tragic stuff. And, and that's definitely what happened to me when I lost my mother. Like, that was my rock. Like, he he laid there with me until I feel like I had the strength to get out the bed. And as y'all know, losing somebody like that, that's every day in your life, it changes you. It, it, it just... It just, it just, it's not, you're not the same after that. And um, it was days that I didn't want to get out the bed. It was days that I wanted to give up. And it, it was like, this is before I even found this app. Um, and my friend was the one that she was streaming and she told me to come on here. Um, and that's exactly why I was like, okay, it gave me that push to, to keep going and, and keep moving and, and everything. So, but that cat, that cat held me down mentally for real. That's incredible. What an incredible um, testament of your relationship with your cat and during an incredibly difficult time and how you were able to handle that and move forward a bit by bit. Queen Nikki, thank you for sharing that. Um, on a little lighter note now, do you have to bathe your cat or do you bathe your kitty? Okay, so we go through these little, what you call these? Uh... <laughs> Kind of wipe downs, <laughs> but oh, she does not down. like the water. Okay, my cat will claw you to death, and she even hear water. She's she's out of it. So oh, yeah. you run away. Like she don't even want to. She don't want to even hear the sound of water. Like she don't like it. So I I go through these like kind of like wipe down sessions with her because she don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's sometimes the wipes are the good, the best way with the, yeah, with yeah, the paper yeah. towel. Yeah, I, I totally can relate to that. Um, just having two cats myself. Okay, with our last three minutes together, I want to talk about a little bit more about you and less about your kitty, Laura. Okay, okay. um, I want to talk about you. When do you stream? Like, what when can we find you? Do you have any social media? Like, how can we? Okay. Us, so. Like, if there's people here tonight in the audience and they're like, "Hey, I kind of liked Queen Queen Nikki. I loved hearing her story about Laura, and this resonates with me." Where can they find you, Queen? Okay, sick. So I am a Meet Me streamer. Um, I've been streaming on here for about a year. Um, so I normally stream between the hours of 12 and 4, Monday through Thursday, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 6 to 10, okay? Um, I also apply for Top Badge. I've been grinding for those things as well. I do, I'm hosting my first three auctions. Uh, I had one um, last month, and I got one on June um, 24th. And I have one in July 15th that I'm hosting. So I'm 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 just all over the place right now trying to get my name out there. And I appreciate you, Kitty, so much for having me on this platform. It's such an amazing time. And I appreciate you so much. And, and then Queen Nikki, is can they find you on Instagram? Do they have a yes. link? Is it, so is it in your is, bio? Yes. Yeah, so if you I normally go right on Instagram, shout out uh every time I go stream before I go stream. Larry right now. Hey, I'm about to go on live. This is Meet Me um, and everything like that. So yeah, my Instagram is also inside my bio. Please hit me with a fave. I just hit my 10,000 faves. Uh, I'm so excited for that. I can't wait to turn up for that. So I will be having a 10,000 fave party uh, on the way. So thank you all so, so much uh, for being a part of this. Thank you all so much uh, for being it. here with me. Now, I mean, is there any chance we could get one more little peek at Laura or is she too far away? 
Yes. Hold I just on. wanted to give anybody who was late coming in, if you're just coming into Meow and Me right now, I just wanted to welcome you in. Meow means make each one wanted. This is Queen Nikki. We're just ending our segment together with Queen Nikki. And I just wanted to see if we could take a little peek at Queen Queen Nikki's kitty, Laura, just like one last yeah. time before we have to go, because she's just a little love ball. And, you know, she's a rescue cat. Queen Nikki rescued her from t a tire. She was living in a tire and as a little baby kitty and literally saved little baby Laura's life. So um, look at how beautiful she is, you guys. She is gorgeous. What a sweetheart. Yeah. Look at how <laughs> she's so pretty. She is so pretty, Queen Nikki. I want to say thank you to Laura and thank you to Queen Nikki both for coming on the show um, and being here with us both tonight, you guys. Um, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. You have a good one, Kitty. Thank it you, Queen Nikki. This has been lovely. I loved having you as a guest. Thank you, Queen. All right, so I am so excited. You guys, we had an amazing guest. What an incredible story of pet ownership and loving your pet and having pet and having a love of pets. Um, that, is a, that is special to see. I love it. Um, we are going to have my second special guest come into the box here soon. And her name is Rave Noir. Before we have my second special guest, please request the box when you're ready here. We are ready for you. I'm just going to go over um, some pets in the news real quick. A raccoon was spotted. Yes, a raccoon. I know it's not everybody has a raccoon, but there was a raccoon recently spotted as it was politely trying to order a donut from a Dunkin, Dunkin Donuts drive through like a regular. Yes, the donut eating raccoon proves everybody runs on Dunkin. Okay, let's take a look. I want to show you. Um, I just want to show you real quick what, what we're working with here with this silly raccoon. You see the person right here? You see their hand? Look, the, this is the Dunkin' Donut drive through worker. This is the, the raccoon. Here he is trucking away with his donut. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, this is the this is the raccoon getting his daily dose of Duncan from his the from the drive through worker, and then he the the raccoon takes off with his donut across and over. If you guys are interested in reading this story, it is on the today.com website, May thirtieth, twenty twenty three. Um. And it's so it's such such a cute story about you know the the Dunkin Donuts drive through raccoon the Dunkin Donuts drive through raccoon I mean I could not handle it myself I thought this is hilarious I have got to show people this silly silly raccoon running away uh, Rave Noir if you're here please request the box if you're here please request the box. Um, I, I saw her earlier, so I know she was in the comments. Um, I'm just waiting to see if she's requesting the box. And you guys, so if you guys want to go check it out too, I, I do believe there's a short video, um, an actual short video that's also available. Um, and, and it has 21 million views on it. It's 21 million views and 4 million likes. So if you put in Dunkin' Donut Raccoon, I'm pretty sure you're going to be able to find the video and enjoy. And I hope you get a good laugh because it, it is really adorable. It is really, really cute. Now our second special guest of the night, you guys. Welcome in, Rave. Hi. Hello, Rave. Hi. Now, Rave, who do you have with you tonight? We have the famous Mr. Bix. His name is Bixby. He's wearing a tie for all you ladies out there tonight. Bixby. <laughs> is it like B-I-X? B-Y. B-Y-X or B Big Big Bixby. It's B-I-X-B-Y. Bixby. Yes, B-I-X-B-Y. Yep. I'm going to let him down because he's a little uncomfortable. 
Yeah, no, that's fine. And he can always trot around or be around, too. I know it's difficult. Sometimes we, we bribe our pets to stick around us, you know. Um, now, what kind of dog is he? He is a pug, um, but he's also a rescue. I would love to put out there, be careful if you rescue pugs. Um, they are... Uh, a sad breed, um, th their lineage as far as that goes. Um, but if you're going to have a pug, do a rescue pug because these pugs need homes and a lot of people treat them like toys and they're not. They're, they're very special dogs and this dog's very special to me. So, yeah, what, very made you, what made you feel like you needed to go and go to the rescue um, animal shelter to rescue a pet? not to to follow the queen before me um i um on december 22nd of 2016 i lost my my dear grandfather so um he was a prisoner of war for uh, the korean war and um my dog came he he died the 22nd of december and my dog came the 23rd um basically we're half native american um hence my name rave noir i have raven on my arm i love animals um all about animals um I didn't think that I was, I, I was in a really tough spot too. And I didn't think I would get so attached to a pug. I always had bigger dogs, bigger animals. Um, and right away, um, that connection that the guest before you had, um, same thing. Um, when I needed him, he was there and um, I fell in love the first day. I, I actually kind of processed what was going on. And this was also the first year of my daughter's birth. So they're both the same age. Um, so it, that, he's just a blast. I love having him, but. Um, that's kind of the backstory. Oh, sure. And approximately how old is he, Rave? 10 years old. He's 10 years old. So he, um, old. yep. Um, so he has, um, he does have a deformity, um, and it comes with a pug breed. Um, <laughs> my little helper here came up with a bunch of facts, but, um, so a lot of pugs have, um, because they're a massive breed, they have a lot of trachea problems, throat problems, stomach problems, um, so, so far, bet wise, he's cost a lot, but it, no, there's no dollar amount that's ever too much for a pug. Um, he's just a cuddle bug. He's fantastic. I, I love having him around. Um, so I, I never thought I'd get used to a small dog. I never thought I'd want a small dog. And I don't know um, if I'll stop rescuing pugs. <laughs> oh, that's very sweet. That's very sweet. Um, you know, and I love that. You know, I mean, you. so you, you've recently got big speed. Uh, uh, no, um, we've had him for 10 years. We've had him for 10 oh, years. Oh, you've had him for 10 years. He's not just 10 yeah. years old. Okay, yeah, gotcha. Life. So um, a lot of things are going on. Um, so, um, yes, uh, at the time, um, and I have my facts wrong on, on the dates. Um, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, yes, uh, in a, at about, um, yeah, he's about my daughter's age. I, I have it all mixed up. He was a little bit older when my daughter uh, came into the picture. So that's why he's 10 and she's 10. Because I said 2016, my grandfather passed away. So, <laughs> I mean, what what kind of naughtiness can a pug really get into? Like, can you a tell lot. me, like, what kind of naughtiness can a a cute little adorable face like him get into? Like, oh, really, uh, truly. Guy. Like right now, um, he's at my side, just uh, begging for food every every five seconds, always begging for food. Um, <laughs> he's he. So <laughs> he's always at my feet always he's all either at my daughter's feet or my feet um he also loves to um go for the chase so he he's, he doesn't run away a lot but when he does uh he makes you he stands like 10 feet away looks back and then runs again so i i love it um my neighbors have gotten used to it um <laughs> they all adore him so they help out uh you know picking him up um but he's kind of like the neighborhood dog around here too everybody he's kind of like the mascot so <laughs> it's, it's been really nice um uh, all kinds of trouble, all kinds of trouble. Sleeping, they'll wake you up in the middle of the night just to cuddle you. Um, he oh, nuzzles, he, he hangs you. Oh, all the time. He's, uh, pugs are very, uh, they, they stay very close to their owners. So, um, yes, he is a cuddle dog. Like right now he's pouting. He's looking at me pouting right now. So yeah. and they get bad rap for being ugly, but I like the ugly side. <laughs> it's not the pouting pug for you. It is, it is, it is. Hey, welcome in. Thank you so much. And welcome in if you're coming in to meow and me. This is Rave Muir. And this she we are talking about her 10-year-old rescue pug. And he is a cutie. Okay, he is a cutie. Um, what is a bad habit that he has besides 
snuggling you too closely. <laughs> Feeling food. Um, we have a, uh, so we have our kitchen table, but we have like a little breakfast area that we like to eat our little, you know, diner area. And, um, he, he will often, if you just are not paying attention, he'll steal some food off of your, the, the little table. Um, if you have food in your hand, he'll, he'll steal it out of your hand. Um, but I don't mind. Um, he's always sensitive and he's always gentle about it. So he, he's my little gentleman. <laughs> what kind of foods does a pug eat? I don't know. Well, I do keep him on a very um, strict diet because of all of the health concerns, uh, and especially because he's 10. Um, pugs have like a 10 to 12 year lifespan, um, though I've heard of others having them longer. Um, he eats his regular non-grain, you know, um, blue, uh, I can't even think right now, um, the, the blue uh, dry food. And then we have, I do a, my own mix. I actually go to delis or um, I ask for meats and I'll combine it in the food so that way he has wet food too. Um, and because of that, um, he also loves sausages. That's his favorite treat. Um, but he also loves apples. Apples he loves. Um, and I've never had a dog that loves apples. We, every time we cut up apples, he starts running. <laughs> so strange. That, that, that's it incredible. It's incredible. It like, I mean, apples and sausage. I mean, that's so cute. Um, I mean, so he gets a, like, hearty... He gets a hearty mixture. It sounds like in his cat, in his dog diet. I mean, not his cat diet. He's he's about how much does he weigh? He's just under twenty pounds. Sometimes he's nineteen. Sometimes he's twenty. Um, he's very very small for. Again, he came from a a, a a he came from a mill, so he was a rescue pug. So he was already underweight to begin with. Um, so it took a lot to get him to weight, and um, it, it took a lot to get him used to being around men. Um, that seemed to be something he was very shy of for a long time, but we're a female-dominated house, so he's in love here. <laughs> uh, now, remember, if you're just coming in and you have a question about pugs that I'm not asking and you're dying to know, you know, a little bit more information about, you know, pugs or, or at least a, a question for Rafe, feel free to ask it if it's appropriate. I will ask your question, but only if it's appropriate. Okay. Um, what is your favorite thing for you two to, your, the two of you to do together? Uh, um, there's a lot of things. Um, again, Native American, being part, being half Native American, um, I love taking my walks in nature and having him with me. I love to sit on the ground and um, we call it listening to Mother Earth. And um, he will just, he's just my snuggle buddy. He's he's always there with me, um, very protective of me and my child, um, but not in a bad way. Never, I, I know some pugs get a bad rap, um, dogs in general too. Um, but he's he's never bit down or bit anybody. Um, but he's protective. He he will bark at you to death. <laughs> so he's got a big bark, but a little bite. Okay. You know, no, oh, I'm just kidding. He's really... he, he's scared of his own shadow. So I don't even know why he gets <laughs> like, so defensive. Yeah. <laughs> hello, hello, welcome in. Um, okay, he, so he sleeps with me. He, sleeps with me. <laughs> he does. So like, does you have any other pets, or is it just him? Well, for um, my my child has a, a cat, but that would be at her dad's house. But I know that that will probably be coming with me soon, um, <laughs> just because of tolerance. Um, um, but I did before that um, have another cat, um, and she was a Persian and Himalayan mix, um, and her name was Precious. Um, but um, as my grandfather went, she passed away, and then uh, uh, Bixby came into the picture. So um, um, I've had a lot of animals, though. I mean, horses, um, rabbits, chickens, you, you name it. So <laughs> I made anything a pet as a kid. <laughs> uh, so you have a lot of it. You have a lot of experience with pets then. Um, you know, have you always had this love of pets? You know, always? I did. I did. Um, I grew up uh, training and riding horses. Um, horses was a, a big thing for my, my elders, my grandparents. Um, uh, so... I grew up with Appaloosas and Stallions, um, any breed horse really. Um, but, um, always had dogs on the farm and, um, I've always loved birds too. Birds is a big thing with me. Um, you know, in the name, um, I just feel a connection to animals and I feel like we have a, a duty to protect them. And yes, I said duty. Um, <laughs> um, I, we do. We, I think that, um, animals are just, we're, we're blessed to have them with us, you know, and, and we should step up a little bit. Yeah, if that makes 
Um, you know, absolutely. Um, now does does he go to the groomers? Do you bathe him? Like, how do you get him into a bathtub? Like, do you throw him in? You know, do you have to lure him in with peanut butter? Like, what happens and with him? It takes my so it actually takes my daughter um because uh ah. we, we have to switch up our sleep time because she gets a little jealous so i have to make sure he sleeps with her too um but it's not jealous it, it's all in, in in good fun um but um she lures him to the bathroom and then i have these tiny chewy snacks and every time you know i give it to him um he does have very high anxiety so things like vet visits or um because he just had a surgery um, not too long ago too um, it takes a lot to pry him now, but um, I used to take him to a groomer a lot and it got to be really expensive. And I worked in the beauty industry for a very long time and I kind of just figured it out for myself. I did a lot of research on it and I do it all. And when I say I do it all, um, I'm sure questions will come, but um, I, I do. I, I take care, very good care of my dog. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's great. Um, I mean, I, I think it's good that you may save a lot of money being able to do um, this by yourself. I mean, like, um, what is the, okay. What is the strangest thing you notice about having a pug? Like, is there something strange that they do? Yeah. The head butting the, I, so, I mean, I, I think all dogs kind of nudge you or whatever, but this dog will directly forehead to forehead and, and they have a very small snout. So I think that's part of it. Um, he just comes right up and headbutts you every time. Um, so, um, it, it's adorable. It so low or like what, what, how does he headbutt you exactly you're, you're on the bed like what happens all the, all the time um if especially when you're cuddling with him if he doesn't feel he has enough cuddles he will just come right up headbutt and then i know i gotta keep petting keep petting <laughs> it, it, it's the friendliest headbutt but we always laugh about it I, I never had an animal that just literally forehead to forehead just headbutts you all the time <laughs> he, he must he, this is how he said it's like a fist punch you know he's like pound it you know, it he's is. like, you it. know, that's oh, that's so special. That's so cute. Okay, I just realized that so much time has gone by. Um, Rave, um, with our last few minutes together, um, tell us about you. Are you know, do you stream? When do you stream? Um, where can we find you streaming? I'm on POF. Um, I I um, mainly stream at nighttime. I am a single mom. Um, I do in the morning too. Sometimes I sneak some streams in the morning. Um, I would love to get to your level someday, but probably not. Um, and congrats to you and shout out to um, Jay too for getting me here. Um, uh, but pretty much that's that. Those are my hours. Um, I'm pretty laid back on here. I'm trying to do something positive and, and nice. I like that. So the best way to catch you, oh, thank you, is in the evenings. You said after eight o'clock. Um, usually about nine nine o'clock. Yeah, yeah. My nine my uh, little one's older, so yeah, she likes to push the time every year that we get older. So. And do you have like an Instagram anybody can follow, or do you have any um, social media that's appropriate for the public to view, like not your spot, your home, you know, but. Yes, I have uh, Instagram and it's under Howl um, Rave. So uh, like Howl as in Wolf and then Rave at a seven on Instagram. So if you wanted to follow me there, uh, absolutely welcome. And I, I can't thank you enough for being on your show. You're, you're absolutely gorgeous. And I, I really enjoyed this. I really did too. And thank you for making a special accommodation to be here tonight, Rave Noir. I know that you're under the gun a little bit, but we appreciate you being here with, um, with Big Speak. Right, I got that right. I got it right. Yeah, you said it right. You yeah. said it right. Thank it's, you. Thank you. <laughs> I had to say, I was like, it's. I got it. I got it. Yes, he's so cute and so it was so special. The relationship with you two. If you're in the crowd and you're like, I really like Grave. I like her vibe. I love her dog. I mean, it's hard not to love a pug. Let me tell you, it's hard not to love those cute little pugs. You know, they're so pretty. Please make sure you hit her with a favorite. Go follow her on her Instagram. She will let you know more if you ask more questions, I bet. Please hit her with a favorite. Go check her stream out, you guys. Rave, I want to just thank you for being my special guest here in the second part of the show tonight and um, being with us here tonight. I'm so honored. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Okay. And I, I, I hope everyone, I, I wish everyone uh, much uh, happiness and, and be safe and be kind to everyone. So um, thank you so much. Thank you, Ray. Thank you for being here. I'm going to let you out of the box. Okay. Yes, so you, you don't have to. Okay. You guys, thank you so much for coming in this week to Meow and Me. This wraps up our program for the night. We went and played some animal trivia. We also had our first special guest, Queen Nikki, with her beautiful kitty cat, who was eight months old, Laura, who she rescued out of a tire. We heard about the Dunkin' Donuts drive through raccoon. Go watch it on a video. Check it out and see what 21 million other people had to say about the drive through Dunkin' Donuts for raccoon. And then we just saw our last special guest, Rave Noir, and her 10 year old pug, Bixby. Now, feel free to to feel free to favorite all my special guests, but also I want to do some shout outs to my top gifters of the night. Thank you to Bella. Thank you to Top Edge Good Listener, to Miss Chrissy, to Box Boy, to OG Vibes, to King Charles, to Nana, 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 Nana. I always say it wrong, but it's Nana, Top Edge Nana, to Fred, to Bobby Mickey, to Rave Noir, to Kawaii to MG, to Duchess, to Ninja Dolls, and everyone else in the line. Please make sure you favorite people and enjoy their company. Um, I'm so glad that, that you came here tonight, but I am going to let you go now. And I hope I see you again next week for Meow and Me when we have two more special guests and who knows what kind of pets we'll have. woo Hello, Rebecca. Good, good night, everybody. Bye, meow. Brrr.